is Chef Linda from Catskill Animal Sanctuary and these are the ingredients you need to make sure that you have no more boring potato salad for your summer gatherings. This weekend is Memorial Day weekend. We are honoring, remembering, but we're also gathering, hopefully, if we're vaccinated, right? So we're going to be gathering and we want delicious vegan goodness out there in the world and this is the best recipe that you can bring to your friends and family because when people say what do vegans eat you're going to say this amazing potato salad so this is a potato salad Unlike say hi to kacha and tammy oh, hello thanks for joining tina hi tina uh so this potato salad is awesome because we're using some really great interesting ingredients. So we're going to start with, look at these gorgeous baked potatoes, um, baked sweet potatoes. I baked these right before we started because I wouldn't have enough time otherwise, but they only take about 20 minutes in the oven. So yes. hi to Judith, I'm sorry. Hi Judith. So these uh, sweet potatoes are spiced with cumin, with cinnamon, with turmeric, black pepper, simple things that you have in your spice cabinet. And this makes all the difference between a boring potato salad uh, and something really bright and flavorful and tropical. So this is a recipe that is from our cookbook. Here it is, this beautiful, beautiful by Alexander Scheitzman, our photographer. Here's the recipe, we use it all the time in my house. And this is our cookbook, right? So uh, you can order that at casanctuary.org. But I want to get cooking. So I bake these sweet potatoes at 425. It's two sweet potatoes. And the way this comes together is that we are going to make this really tart and punchy kind of dressing. And we're going to add some really unusual ingredients to our potato salad, things you don't usually find. So I'm taking these sweet potatoes that are already roasted and I'm just putting them into a mixing bowl here. It's nice when uh, you can get together and the people that you know, people you're gathering with are all vegan because you can eat everything, right? It's nothing better than a vegan cookout because you can just kick back and enjoy. But a lot of us have mixed families, mixed friend groups, and it's always nice to bring the most interesting and exciting dish to the party, right? So inevitably, every time we go somewhere and we bring our vegan dish, it is the dish that everybody eats, so I have to double or triple it because I know that it's gonna go fast and people are gonna eat it and they're gonna ask questions. So uh, I like to have lots of it. So here's our sweet potatoes. They're gorgeous. They're lightly, lightly spiced. Um, Smell tender. delicious too. Mm. These are so good. Again, cumin, cinnamon, a little turmeric. Uh, and just a note, you guys, when you're cooking um, and you're using turmeric, which I hope you are because it's a great uh, anti-inflammatory, great for brain health, right? Use black pepper. Black pepper and turmeric, they go together and they, the black pepper makes sure that the turmeric um, is more easily absorbed, basically. So it works better in your body. So use them together. Yeah. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. How are you? Thanks for joining. It's a beautiful day here. I'm in Connecticut. Um, and it is gorgeous out. It's a little bit hot. Uh, so we are getting cooking in the kitchen here. I'm going to make the dressing now. The dressing is so simple. You can use this dressing on any salad whatsoever. Hey, Tom. You're here? You're here. Tom, you're going to laugh because... And Kate. And Kate, because the weather report was supposed to have thunder showers late this afternoon, which for me, it's late this afternoon, and I... No <laughs> rain, I hope. It's pouring here, Tom. <laughs> pouring. No, not yet, but it will be tonight, and it will be this weekend, on the holiday weekend. So, what did I do? I thought of my friend Tom. Hi, Vera. Hi, Vera. And Lulu. Hi, Lulu. That's a fun name. Uh, I'm going to make the dressing. So simple, nothing fancy. All I'm doing is I'm using about a quarter cup of lime juice. The lime kind of gives it a tropical feel. I'm using a little bit of lemon juice because lemon juice seems to have a little bit more of a punch to it. I'm gonna add some olive oil, two or three tablespoons. 
will work just fine. Debbie uses her turmeric in her oatmeal. Oh, that is super, Debbie. I use mine, I use raw turmeric, a little piece of the root every day in our smoothie. Um, but I never used it in oatmeal. I'm gonna try that, that's a good tip. Uh, I'm gonna add a little maple syrup. Sweet potatoes already have sweetness if you don't wanna add maple syrup. Um, I like it because it has this really earthy sweetness. It's not super sweet and it just kind of like enhances the sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons, tablespoons rather, sorry, of maple syrup. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard. Mustard has this really neat kind of, if you don't overdo it, it's just that little ingredient that makes you go, hmm, is that mustard back there? What is that? Maybe just a teaspoon. And that helps to emulsify, which means it helps to blend it together. And I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. When I go to the store, I always buy the garlic cloves um, that are already peeled because I'm a, I have a busy life. And then I throw them all into the food processor, chop them up, put a little bit of olive oil on top, put a batch in my freezer and a batch in my fridge. And I always have that ready because I don't like to chop garlic every time I need it. I don't know about you. So I'm putting in about a teaspoon and a half of fresh chopped garlic. If you didn't have fresh chopped garlic, you could use garlic powder. Um, that would be fine, but fresh garlic does give it a really nice, um, exciting kind of taste that makes you stand up and notice. So we're just whisking that together. You don't need any fancy equipment here. I like when recipes don't need fancy equipment, um, even though I have, you know, the blender and the food processor and things like that. It's nice to just be simple sometimes, right? That's it. That's our dressing. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, and it's going to just make everything flop, um, pop. <laughs> or flop. Or flop. We hope it doesn't flop. So I'm going to now... Hi, Betty. Hey, Betty. We're going to use some black beans. You don't often see black beans in a potato salad um, because they would make the potatoes, which are generally white, they would kind of make them look a little off color, maybe purple at first and then make a little bit gray, but they work great in sweet potato salad. And they're so great because they're so full of, I mean, I hate to be the, the vegan who always talks about protein, right? None of us do, but it's a lot of protein in here. It's a lot of fiber. It's a lot of great nutrients. So I love working beans into um, recipes where I can and when they're in unusual places, it's kind of fun. So I'm gonna put in this is a can of the black beans that I drained. I always drain and rinse them because we get all the salt out. Um, use as much or as little as you like. I'm going to use, I'm actually not going to use the whole can because my sweet potato wasn't as big as I thought. And I want to have a lot of sweet potato. So look how gorgeous that is. The contrast of colors, right? We eat with our eyes. And when we eat with our eyes, um, it actually does start your salivary glands working. It starts to help you pre-digest your food before you even get it in your mouth and get it to your stomach. So it's good to have beautiful food. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. So then I'm gonna add, this is just frozen corn. Now, my corn in the East Coast, it's not really in season yet, but it's coming. So I use frozen corn. I just leave it out on the counter and let it thaw out. I do not cook it. I don't have to do anything other than thaw it. And I'm gonna pop it right in the bowl here. I mean, that looks like a party for your mouth. Yeah. Hi, Matt, Sarah, and Peggy. Hi. Hi, everybody. So look at this gourd. I mean, if you bring this to your party, your gathering this weekend, and people are going to stand up and take notice, right? So that's that. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop up some peanuts. We're going to chop up some scallions. You could use... Um, chives. You could also use shallots if you wanted to. You could even use red onions. I like scallions because they kind of, they're, they don't come on too strong. They're kind of subtle. Like the first date, they're not like asking you to get married. They're just saying, come on, like just have a little oniony taste. So I kind of like that. Uh, so I'm going to give these, I'm going to trim the ends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them on the bias after I get that tip off, which means just diagonally. And once you get up into the green part, it just kind of makes it look pretty. So, uh, so I was up at Catskill Animal Sanctuary yesterday, uh, which is who I work for. And I was had the great, great good fortune to make my coworkers uh, a, a box 
lunch. We had a we had a meeting, and after the meeting, I actually you know what I made for lunch. I made this. I made the scarlet black bean burger from this book, Petsville Animal Sanctuary's cookbook, and made the avocado scallion dressing that went on top. It was outrageous, and I also made the Mediterranean orzo salad in here, and so everybody loved it, and it is National Hamburger Month, people, and so if you are vegan, it is a great month to get out there, try new vegan um, burgers that are, on, that are on the market, whether it's your Beyond Burger and you haven't tried it, or the Impossible Burger, or there's all kinds of wonderful um, ones that have different flavors and different textures, um, and share them this weekend. National Hamburger Month. Those black bean burgers were so delicious. Somebody said that? And yes. the dressing was out of this world, too. Yes, yes. So be a good vegan steward this weekend. Get some vegan hamburgers, whether you make them or whether you buy them. Bring them to your cookout, your picnic, and just remind people that we don't eat, we don't need to eat hamburgers from animals. So look at these beautiful scallions. They add color and glorious taste and texture to our dish. I'm going to add them in. So one of the things that is so wonderful about working at Catskill Animal Sanctuary is not only that I get to feed the people who work so hard, the people who are you know behind the scenes doing social media, doing our fundraising, doing um, our books, you know the people who do who work and don't ever have a personal opportunity to connect with our supporters. We also have the other side, which is the people who work in animal care and who take care of the grounds. And these people, in all weather, the hottest days, the coldest days, the saddest days, we've lost uh, we lost a, um, some residents recently, and even when their hearts are broken, they come and show up and do their job and work through it, and they are like superstars. Everybody here is a superstar, so I get to feed them, and it is always a pleasure and a joy. Um, but one of the fun things I got to do yesterday is I needed to get some photographs. They needed some photos of me, just some updated stuff, so I got to... Uh, go behind the scenes with the animals, which I don't always get a chance to do. And um, I got to sit with Michael, um, who is a female turkey, and give Michael some hugs. And I got to get down in the mud with one of our glorious pigs, Jasmine. And just had a, like, it's such an aha, I don't know, such an interesting moment because I got into her pen, it actually wasn't her pen, but I got in there and she was done eating and she was kind of munching and we wanted her to lay down um, because I needed to get next to her so we could kind of be in the shot. And we, you know, I rubbed her belly and she went down on her front legs, her front hooves curled under and she went all the way down and rolled over. And when I laid down next to her and I looked at that, I said, that is exactly what my dog will do. When I say, let me rub your belly, my dog will lay down and roll over. And if you have a dog, um, if you're not vegan, if you have a dog or a pet, you make the connection between what our domestic friends do and what the farmed animals do. And you realize they're exactly the same. They have the same they have the same joys. It right? was a beautiful moment with Jasmine, our belly rub queen. Yes, and so they're just the same. The animals have the same joys. They want a belly rub, they want to be scratched, um, and they have the same pain and the same heartache. And uh, if people could understand that farmed animals are no different, they are no different from our domesticated animals, and frankly, they're no different from us. And so I get those beautiful moments at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. So right now, um, my heart is full and I am making, what I'm doing is making basil chiffonade and I'm making a mess of it. But chiffonade is just a fancy term when you stack up your greens, stack up your herbs, your basil, and you kind of roll it in a cigar-like shape and always put your knuckles under so you don't cut, and you cut very, very, very thin. You're right, Tom. Friends, not food. Right on, Tom. And so I just cut very, very thin strands um, of basil. You could do this. I did this the other day with my collard greens. 
um, I rolled up beautiful collard greens and made a fabulous um, stew, stewed greens with tomatoes. And so I'm putting this all in our bowl now because it's nice to have this summery. Basil to me is one of the smells. quintessential, yeah, right? It smells like mm. summer. It's one of the quintessential summer smells. Um, and so you could also do, if you wanted to do uh, cilantro is beautiful in here, but you know what? Does anybody out there, um, does anybody out there garden? Do you have an herb garden? Um, it's so fun. I mean, you could probably just put, look, look out here. You can see just on my little tiny deck, I've got boxes of herbs. I have boxes of lettuces over there. Um, those green lettuces I'm gonna eat pretty soon. <laughs> um, but it's a beautiful thing, even when you have no space, to grow your own food, to grow an appreciation of where food comes from, the freshness of it, um, the work that goes into it, the farmers, the people who pick, the, the, the whole system behind bringing food to us so that we can eat and enjoy. It's very, very important. So even if you do one pot of basil, grow something this summer. It's so fun. Uh, so that's where my basil come, came from and my cilantro was not quite ready yet. So that's why we're eating basil. But you could do cilantro in here. So now everything is like beautiful mixed together. We're just going to add this beautiful crowning top to this because not only do we eat with our eyes, we look for texture, right? You don't want something that is all one kind of texture. Usually what feels the nicest when we're really enjoying something is if there's different textures. So if you have something that's really soft and swooshy, it's nice to have a little crunchy something on top. If you have something really hard and crunchy, crispy, it's nice to have like a smooth avocado sauce or a piece of avocado on top. So you're, you're your mind and your body and your tongue and everything kind of delights in different textures. So we have this very soft, these nice soft um, sweet potatoes and beans and kind of this bright corn. But what's nice on top is these beautiful peanuts. So I have salt. Say hi to Phyllis. Hi Phyllis. Linda, Patricia. Hi Linda and Patricia. Linda, go Linda. Best name in the world. Uh. Well, let's not get carried away. <laughs> Uh, so best have, wife in the world but thank you so i have salted peanuts um these are actually from trader joe's these are the 50 percent less salted peanuts um why not use a little less salt where we can and i'm going to give them a rough chop and they're going to bounce all over i would not do this in the food processor because you might end up making peanut butter which isn't a bad thing necessarily uh however we want chopped peanuts and that's kind of a rough chop. A rough chop means, you know, just breaking it down a little bit. And when you're cutting, right, one of the things that I've seen people do, because I've taught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, um, is using your knife when you're chopping, it's a rocking motion. That's why the blade is curved, right? So if you're chopping, you hold it, the pointy end down, and you just kind of rock back and forth. You can do this with herbs, do this with all kinds of things, but um, instead of coming cutting right down like that because things it's just not efficient and uh, things can splatter and fly all over the place. Are those roasted peanuts? These are roasted peanuts. 50% less salt um, from Trader Joe's, but get whatever kind of peanuts you want. You could also do another um, nut if you wanted to. And if you're nut free, you could do um, beautiful pecans, you know, the raw pumpkin seeds. Those are gorgeous. Um, they add beautiful color, and you could also you could get those roasted and salted, and you can also use roasted and salted sunflower seeds if you're nut free. Um, so that is a nut free option. But peanuts are kind of like a uh, southern kind of I don't know. They seem to go with this. So I'm taking these beautiful peanuts, and I am going to put them in our bowl. You could add them at the end as a garnish, but I kind of like to get everything mixed together. Could we use pine nuts? Oh yes, you could definitely use pine nuts. I, you know, sometimes I don't recommend pine nuts in a recipe. You know what, I'm going to chop a few more. This is about a cup um, and I just put a little bit in it. But pine nuts can tend to be um, just a little pricey and so I like to either have an alternative for people um, so that you don't have to buy the most expensive thing. But if you love pine nuts and you have them, uh, by all means. It's just to add a different kind of texture to what you're doing. 
Yay on the pine nuts. Yeah. And they love your cooking classes. Oh, yay. So many ideas for supper. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, you know what? I didn't mention, but we have, I have two, I had the best, best cheese class last week. Hi, um, Donna. Hi, Donna. We had so much fun. We made five, count them, five different vegan cheeses. We made buffalo mozzarella, which is so you can make a beautiful summer capri salad with the tomatoes and the basils. Those were fantastic. We made a sliceable mozzarella that you could grate. Um, and that was delicious. We made, uh, we made feta cheese and we made ricotta cheese and we made some, one more cheese and I can't remember what it was. Uh, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. <laughs> I don't know. We made another one, but it was so much fun. And it was so fun to see people just like in their own kitchens at home do something they might have been intimidated by or maybe been a little nervous to try on their own. And now they know how to make vegan cheese at home, five different kinds. So that's fun. I run that class a couple times a year because it's so, so popular. Um, and the next class I have coming up is in June. Put more peanuts in here. The next class I have is June 10th, I believe. And that is going to be, look at that, it is gorgeous. Look at all the textures. We love vegan color. cheeses. Yes, Herb, they're we? yummy. And of course there's delicious ones on the market today. Cheeses have come a long way. If you guys are vegan, I'm sure you all know that. If you're not vegan and you're thinking about it, Cheese is the hardest thing to give up, they say. But today, it shouldn't be. It, it's like where milk was a few years ago. There was like kind of, you know, you had soy milk and you had rice milk. Um, and those were the two basic options you could find. And so people like who didn't like or who were allergic or sensitive, um, you know, didn't, didn't give it a go. Today, you can get oat milk, rice milk, hemp milk, flax milk. Um, you, any kind of nut milk, like you name it. So there's absolutely no reason to be drinking cow's milk anymore. Um, cow's milk is for cows and goat milk is for goats. And so let's leave their milk for them and let's use all the other abundant choices we have. So the same thing for cheese. A few years ago, the cheeses, you know, left a little something to be desired. Today, Go into like even your like you know your big box store. They have vegan cheeses to try mm -hmm. that are fantastic. So there's so many brands available. If you're thinking that vegan cheese is not good, there are recipes out there. There are classes and there are lots of brands. So give it a try. Give it a try because um, the milk is for their babies, not mm -hmm. for us. So let's see. We did all that. We got our dressing already made, and so. Look at that, I'm gonna give a little whisk again. Oh, you know what I forgot to add? I was just gonna say, before you add a dressing to a recipe at home, whether it's a salad or any other recipe, make sure you taste it. Because once you add it, it's probably a little bit late to <laughs> add anything you missed. Well, guess what I forgot to add? Salt, gotta add some salt. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. And I use coarse salt, because I kind of like the way it pops and just, it's just fun. So I'm gonna taste it, make sure. Don't put it. Mm, that is so, mm, it's so bright and yummy. So let's add that to our salad. You can see that's probably about a half a cup of dressing we made. If you wanted to, you could double this and just keep it as a salad dressing in a jar in your fridge. If you look at salad dressings that you buy, so many of them have ingredients that you don't really need or want. So, look at that. You can see the garlic in there. And if you're oil-free, you can certainly do this dressing without oil. You will lose nothing. You might want to um, maybe add a little bit more liquid, add a little bit more mustard, a little bit more lemon juice, lime juice, just to make up the volume so that it is luscious. Look at how creamy and luscious and gorgeous that is. Tom says he never tastes when he's cooking, no, but, he Tom. but he complains afterwards. <laughs> That's because it's always raining where you are, Tom. <laughs> no, it's always raining here. I know. <laughs> yeah, you definitely taste as you go. Taste as you go. So, if you walked into a party and, you know, with this dish, of course, you can bring it in a, in a beautiful bowl, um, you would be the hit of the party. So let's serve that up. 
and see what that tastes like. Let's see what it looks like. Oh my goodness. Can you Yum. imagine this is potato salad? This is what vegans eat. This is what vegans eat. I love it when they go, well, what do you eat? Look at we eat this. And I bet you wish you could eat this. And you can. Um, and I can. Because vegans usually are so happy to share their food because we, it's like, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. It really is greener on the other side, on the vegan side of the fence. So when we make food, it's like you just want to share it with everybody um, because it's so delicious and it just proves that you do not need to incorporate animals or animal products into your cooking. We are beyond that. Right. We are going to be at the tipping point and we are going to be, every kitchen is going to be a vegan kitchen, I hope, in my lifetime. So I'm going to try this. And I'm always sad when I try it, and you can't try it, but... Or the cameraman can't try it. Or the cameraman can't try it. Um, but you can see in every bite, in every bite, there's like something delicious, right? It's like a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So let's give it a try. Now the happy dance. That is fantastic. And the one of the other things I like about vegan cooking, right, is that not everything by a long shot that vegans make is like a veganized version. Like not everything I make is a, a vegan chicken salad or a vegan hamburger or a vegan pastrami or any of those things. Those things are great. And it's wonderful that people are developing products and recipes and cookbooks and all that great stuff. Most of the food we eat is just food. It's the same food that non-vegans eat. Um, we're just a little better at it, I think. We're um, smarter. We're just a little bit more creative because <laughs> we, it's just, food is just, uh, I don't know, it's on our mind all the time. So the fact that we can make beautiful, exciting, creative food that happens to be vegan, it's just food. Like this isn't a veganized anything, there's nothing non-vegan in here to begin with but it's a creative use of beautiful healthy delicious foods that anybody could and should eat um, and that anybody would be familiar with nothing strange nothing unusual nothing for people to feel uncomfortable about so memorial day weekend take this make this potato salad take it to your friends Take it to your family. Tell them where you learned it. Chef Linda, Catskill Animal Sanctuary on Jane Unchained, Lunch Break Live. And I do hope that you'll check out casanctuary.org. Learn a little bit about the very, very important work that we do, the animals that we save, the homes that we provide, the medical care we provide. And if you haven't already, please buy our cookbook, Compassionate Cuisine on our website, the proceeds go to the care and feeding of these magnificent, innocent, wounded, scarred animals who are brought back to life with love at the sanctuary. We are open. We are so, so open, so ready to be visiting, I mean, having visitors come down the hill onto the farm. We give magnificent tours where you can get face to face with animals like Jasmine, um, cows like Dozer, um, the underfoot family that run alongside you, all the happy goats. and uh, So you make your reservation online. Tom's going to book a flight. Come on, Tom. I'll give you a personal I'll tour. I'll make sure it rains that weekend. <laughs> um, so Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. So come and visit us. Come check out a tour. We have a beautiful bed and breakfast and inn. Um, you can check that out, too. But open up your heart. Lead with love, eat plants, not animals, and I will be back right after the holiday. I think June 2nd, I'm back on Lunch Break Live again, and what am I making? I think I'm making something that used to have eggs in it. So, um, thank you for watching. Thank you for having me on the show, Jane and others, and uh, I wish you all a beautiful, beautiful, rain-free weekend. Bye-bye.